Good afternoon. You're still awake? Yes. Good. I like that. <laughs> My name is Anne Rochelle Iné, and uh, as Aparna said, I'm the Chief Operations Officer of Afrinic. How many people know Afrinic here? Oh, great. Fantastic. Generally, I don't get that many hands up. <laughs> so um, you, you guys can maybe wander around while I'm doing my speech, but no, stay here. Uh, one of the, I'm so happy to actually go after uh, all of them here. Uh, one of the things that Mike said here, I'm going to make a parallel with what we do in the IP space, which is basically, yes, um, for the longest time, uh, Spectrum, uh, just like what we call uh, critical resources, have been the domain of uh, you know a few people who know about them, and uh, uh, the two things that have driven uh, spectrum management are um, technical efficiency, but also economic efficiency. Some will tell you, because of what Michael was talking about, the so-called scarcity of spectrum. You know, um, we have the same issue with uh, uh, IP. Uh, yes, in IPv4, definitely, you know, there will be scarcity very soon. Uh, but hopefully with V6, you know, we'll be able to uh, get to um, um, the internet of things and, uh, you know, access in at all levels that people will want. So uh, for me, Talking about TV white space today, and this is the reason why Afrinic also uh, decided to team up with, uh, with Google and uh, all our partners here, is that uh, this thing should be considered just like uh, other uh, critical resources as common goods. You know, we all should be team up, um, teaming up to, to manage those. And the more people know about them, the less we have the scarcity issue because discussion gets us to the point where we realize that, yeah, there is actually no scarcity if we can manage them properly. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to give you just a few minutes of what Afrinic is. Right now, there is uh, about 39 stuff at Afrinic. Uh, AFRINIC is the Regional Internet Registry for Africa. For those who don't know, that is an organization that manages the blocks of IP addresses that we get from the IANA in the US at ICANN. And uh, we redistribute them to networks in the region. Up till 2005, Africa was actually served by, by Europe, America, and the Asia Pacific regional internet registries, which meant that uh, basically we could not do our own policies in terms of how IP addresses are allocated, that we could not, uh, you know, because our networks were smaller, we couldn't get the amount of IP addresses they needed. So the scarcity thing followed us for the longest time and even today because a lot of people do not know that you can go to Afrinic and get IP addresses today. You know, on the continent, they feel like you got to go to the big telco around because that's the one that gives your ISP, uh, you know, um, uh, IP addresses, and then you know those give them out to individual users, and that's not the case. Whether as an individual user, as an end user, or as a network operator, big, small, you can actually come to Afrinic and get uh, you know IP addresses. So uh, right now, 39 people. We're based in Mauritius. Because actually, for the longest time, um, you know, governments have uh, helped establish Afrinic, and uh, uh, the one government that at a time had the, you know, facilities for us uh, was uh, uh, Mauritius. So Afrinic is established in Mauritius. Don't worry, we don't work on beaches with Wi-Fi. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> we are really dull offices. Uh, so uh, that's where we are. Uh, 39 people, we have allocated um, about 500,000 uh, IPv4 addresses. Um, we're going to have to move to that V6, definitely. Uh, we have about um, almost four slash eights available right now at Afrinic, which is about um, uh, 16 million times uh, four almost, and uh, you can get the number. That's what is left of V4 on the continent, and we're going to be the last 
a uh, region actually that has uh, IPv4 addresses because of the way uh, allocation is being done. Our networks are not um, uh, thriving. Uh, so having things like TV white space that will permit address uh, access to get to the communities will also uh, make sure that you know networks are done properly, managed properly, and IP addresses are getting out. Um, we're serving a total of 1,200 organizations, which is really very small on a continent of uh, 1 billion plus people. And this is where you see how far we've come on the continent and uh, the reason why access is still absolutely an issue. Um, we do have some training activities. We do a lot right now with the governments in terms of, uh, not only the governments, but network operators around, in terms of moving from uh, uh, the V4 protocol, the legacy protocol, to you know V6. So we do a lot of training. We're going to have uh, activities that are uh, online um, in terms of training. This is just a membership trend. Um, so we've had about 50 training sessions for the past two years in about uh, uh, 40 countries on the continent. And the challenge is to get the decision makers involved, as usual, just like in TV white spaces. Uh, get corporate networks to realize also that, you know, no matter what the technology you use to get access, you know, afterwards the IP addresses are there, but you need to use them and use them soundly properly. Um, we have uh, actually developed a specific course that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, a certification that actually w today Afrinic can do train the trainers uh, courses and certify people. Some of the things that we also do and uh, there are, uh, you know, um, a few we kind of see as development also uh, that have development aspects. Others that are very technical and, uh, you know, uh, uh, engineering types. RPKI, so uh, that's really certification of IP addresses. This is uh, the security part. Uh, DNSSEC, again, uh, that were also security where we, um, uh, uh, we, we have, for example, all our own zone side already, um, and we're helping um, people around to actually do that. So um, DNS Anycast, where we offer infrastructure for country code top level domains, for example, who do not have um, enough redundancy on their ne on national uh, networks, you know, so they can host their zones on our infrastructure. Uh, who is database cleanup is one of the things that uh, we are doing because um, because it's a sound policy already, but also because uh, the law enforcement people have been after us for the longest time and they're going to come after anybody who has, be it TV, white space or anything, if you have a network that is not soundly uh, routed and you can't tell them whose IP addresses have been spoofed to do things with others, <laughs> you'll be in trouble. Uh, router registry, we're um, doing the last testing, testing phases also with some of our colleagues from the other uh, internet registries. Uh, we have new membership process and uh, we're in uh, transition to a totally virtualized architecture where we'll have um, you know, uh, different uh, uh, hubs where our, or, uh, everything or in terms of operations are going virtual. Um, policies under discussion right now. IP addresses allocation. Um, this is just like TV white space. When, when we're talking about uh, uh, spectrum allocation on the continent, this is again one of the things that is the remit, uh, you know, most of the time of regulators. So glad again that we're talking about that here. This is one of the things. Everybody have, has a stake here. After you got that access, you're gonna need those IP addresses. You need to participate in devising the policies that are you know, uh, managing the space. So please um, do that. inter rir IPv4 address transfers is becoming a huge issue. You may have heard that you know, IPv4 becoming pretty scarce. People are uh, uh, buying and selling, um, and governments are becoming very uncomfortable with that. 
um, any cast assignments in the Afrinic region and then reverse reverse DNS lookup unless uh, a space has been assigned cannot be done in the region. That's uh, what this policy is, uh, is asking. Um, we have new bylaws. We're reducing the size of the board. So um, the board of Afrinic, because of the way it was um, thought of from the beginning, has people that are representing the sub-regions of Africa. North, west, uh, east, south, and central, and also um, where we are, uh, um, the Indian Ocean, because we also serve the Indian Ocean region. So we have now, right now three, mem three types of memberships, uh, registered members, resource members, associate members, that can be anybody. So please go look it up. We have a separate nomination committee, a council of elders, we're in Africa. We like those things. Uh, basically people who have been in the process for the longest time and who can also mentor new board members or who can tell you know, the story of the internet and uh, some of these issues there. Yes, I'm done. <laughs> some of the regional challenges, governments, and it's the same that we're facing in TV, you know, white space. How do we support them, you know, in their quest to understand and play an active role in supporting internet development? Businesses, how to get them to understand the importance of IP addresses. This is one of our development initiatives. It's called FIRE, the Fund for Internet Research and Education, where we give small grants to actually projects that are, um, uh, you know, doing development uh, uh, things, applications, name it. So if a few of you know people who might use that, please send them to the website. Uh, this person here who received an award at IGF last year, and his thing is he has a website that he has been developing for the past seven years, for example, that has medical information from uh, what we would call the institutional sector, but also, um, um, how would I call it, uh, uh, our man on the street who sells plants, <laughs> you know, information on, on medical uh, stuff, you know, and available uh, free for everybody on the internet. And um, this is our next meeting in Lusaka, and we're going to have actually uh, also um, uh, a session on TV white space there. And the reason is to make sure that people understand that they have to be part of the discussion. So. This is just, again, the Internet Summit, and thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't, yeah. Uh, we have just a very short amount of time for questions, so I had a few of my own, but in the interest of making sure that everyone else gets heard, I'm going to turn it over to all of you. Um, so anyone with a question, please just raise your hand. Uh, it looks like Richard all the way in the back. University of Southampton. Um, um, a question for Michael Calabrese. Um, if you were to kind of lay out an action plan for how civil society in Africa could start to, you know, how could they start to influence governments to, uh, to free up the white spaces, what would, you, what would your top three tips be? Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a good question and, and a challenge. Um, you, you know, I think Right now, one, one is to uh, get more, you might say, more facts on the ground. I mean, that's why we're, we're so um, eager to see uh, whether it's, you know, universities or other groups um, beginning to take advantage of these TV white space technologies and, you know, do networks and solutions. So, so just start using it. Uh, that's, you know, that's one. Uh, you know, a, a second, of course, is to participate in the regulatory process, because too often, um, you know, whether it's uh, the FCC in the United States or whatever these bodies are, um, they only hear from the, uh, the usual players, and it tends to be cloaked from public view. And so I think the more this gets out in the public and they're hearing from the public, even short, simple letter comments and things uh, w w would be, you know, really, really useful. And then third is just a lot more, a lot more education. 
uh, because you know we find in we again at least in the U.S. and and you know and the U.S. has tended to be ahead of the curve on these issues, and yet it's just amazing. Um, in our U.S. Congress, there's probably only a half dozen uh, of the staff of the members of Congress, and and they're the ones who do all the work and usually know everything, but only about a half dozen or so that actually understand these issues. Um, and the same in other parts of the government or among the media. And so just a lot more affirmative education uh, also about the importance and the linkages back to the economics, like the innovation, the job creation, um, serving unserved areas, and so on. Other questions? Looks like the uh, post-lunch quiet has set in. Um, so I have one actually for the group um, and that is if you could sort of articulate in one sentence, maybe two sentences, what is the biggest benefit for current and future internet users if TV white space takes off in Africa? Just one or two sentences. That's really the, what's the, what's the so what of this whole conversation? Pour moi, je crois que l'apport majeur de cette technologie, c'est de faire partie du monde global, d'être un citoyen comme tout le monde, pour tous ceux qui peuvent accéder à la technologie. Être un citoyen, non pas à part, mais un citoyen à part entière. Moi, je vais aller sur les chiffres. <rire> je vais aller sur les chiffres. 127 millions de connectés, ou 128 peut-être à l'heure actuelle, sur un milliard et plus d'habitants. Euh, voilà quoi, les chiffres parlent d'eux-mêmes. TV White Space, ça va être simplement une des technologies qui aide à mettre encore plus de, comme dit euh, euh, Alex, encore plus de gens sur la société de l'information. On dit information. C'est vrai que l'accès à l'information a toujours été un souci chez nous, donc pour moi, ça va véritablement être ça. Mettre plus de monde encore dans cette société de l'information. Je pense que c'est très tôt pour être confiant que le TV White Space, par itself, va connecter le reste des gens non connectés. Mais je pense que ça ouvre la whole idée de la we live in a spectrum scarce environment. It shifts the uh, focus now to spectrum abundance and how we can really better manage this, this public resource. And I think that process will then shift the uh, whole game plan into making better use of spectrum generally and connect everyone up. Um, I would, for Africa, I would see it as a shortcut to very basic uh, internet access, um, because that's what's most economically important, not only for these individuals. Imagine, you know, compare before cell phones, even these people who share cell phones, right? Before and after, right? So same thing, just basic, even one megabit per second. And then cumulatively, the network effects of having all those people, you know, uh, you know on the internet and communicating to each other. Great. So I think at this point, we'll probably wrap this session, and then I will turn it over to Sedina, who two to five, oh, Sedina is saying, as the master of timekeeping, that we have two to five more minutes, so I think there's room for just one more question, probably. So yes, you in the front. Um, I think she's going to bring you the mic. Uh, my question goes to Anne Afrinik, um, just to appreciate uh, your presentation and uh, more uh, uh, explanation, explaining about Afrinik. 
uh, on the routing uh, registry, uh, which I think you uh, uh, put a caution also on when we build our networks, and if we're not cautious of a few things that they yeah, um, that's where my question is, especially for TV watch faces, where the networks will start simple, maybe simple technologies, maybe no need for routing, but eventually somewhere we would need to expand, mesh them and stuff like that, uh, where this would be useful. Do you have ever any specific advice or on how this could, could, could be done? Um, I can't say I have any specific advice right now on that part exactly, because I mean, uh, as soon as you get a network, then yeah, uh, you need a bit of uh, routing afterwards. Actually, Alex might explain that a little bit better than I could. But uh, uh, what you know, whatever the type of um, technology to get access, if you're having a network afterwards, um, it's going to need some you know IP, and uh, afterwards, the routing of all of that is done by the different registries. You know, so um, are you in Zambia or is it no Malawi? Okay, all right. I was going to say we actually have a full buff also, you know, birds of feathers on uh, on um, uh, the routing registries with all the other registries for uh, uh, at the Lusaka meeting. Yes, and it's going to be webcasting. So if you feel like you might want to participate. Great, well please join me in thanking the panelists. And we'll be back here in 10 minutes sharp. 10 minutes, so exactly at three o'clock. Oh, Jijan has an announcement. Just a quick reminder, uh, Arno Hart from Tenet is doing a demo in the room next. Um, please remember to check it out. <laughs>